Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Our next conversation is uh, going to the NNPC and its uh, declaration of profit. The president uh, yesterday, of course, through his spokesperson, Femi Adishina, uh, you know, declared that the NNPC has, of course, recorded a 287 billion naira profit uh, declaration after 44 years. Uh, we are looking at this uh, with uh, Mr. Alex Nengi, who's an oil and gas consultant. Good morning. Thanks for joining us, sir. Good morning. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. All right. So first question would be, is this something to be celebrated? You know, should we look at this story and, um, you know, celebrate this as a victory, you know, or a win for the NNPC and for the Nigerian uh, oil and gas industry? We, we have always maintained that the way the oil and, uh, company NNPC as an organization is being run, We've always maintained that it is wrong because it's not organized as a profit-oriented organization. So there's a lot of excess. You have Petronas, Petrobras. By 2007, when they were going to make me a group MD, those were some of the things we were looking at. The NNPC as an organization is supposed to be a national petroleum company like any other company like Shell, Chevron, that is profit-oriented, but it was just like a, a clearing house. So where this profit is coming from now has to be well-defined for people to really know, but this is the right direction to go. It's an organization, it's like Shell or Chevron or whatever, and they are supposed to have directors and run it like a business. Running like a ministry whereby it's like a clearing house, uh, X is doing job, this is doing job, the payers is doing that's not what an NPC should be. So the PIB, for example, will help to straighten that out, at least some of those areas will be cleared. But right now, with declaring profit, it is the right direction to go. But how this came about is yet to be explained to the public. Yeah, what, what you know, would you expect, you know, if things were, were properly... Uh, or were run, you know, the right way. What would you expect would be the ways that the NNPC should be able to make profit every year? Generally, like Chevron or Shell, it is a professional outfit, it's a business outfit. So all this government intervention, bring this here, send this barrier here, and all these things will not happen. Mm -hmm. You have a director, you have a clear defined board, and assignments will be given to people. If you are the MD, you are the MD. There are authority, there are ways you have to do this business. And if you are not performing, you get fired. But this one is any, any, anything goes. Man, no man, you bring anybody there, whether he has knowledge or not, because it's a clearing house. So if they start doing things properly, like a business, then they cannot give full account. It's like... I'm receiving X amount, I'm investing this amount, these are the things I'm doing, these are the profits, that's how it goes. Because right now, you have all these leases taken, you give it to another company to run. When they run, whatever profit they make, whatever they make, they declare, you put that as uh, your, your, your profit and all that, you know. So, it, it, they still need to go the extra mile to start doing the company of set up the NNPC properly, whereby people can really see the transparency in the organization to justify profit being declared. And you have to go through expenses. Like now, you have water refinery. It has not worked for years. So, do you declare dividends there? Definitely no. But if you look the overhead, it's still there. And there are several like that. So, that's why I said this dividend being declared or a, a profit being declared, we have to know where it is coming from because there are so many outfits there within the NNPC that is not producing a dime. And it's just like a, a permanent hole where money just gets dumped into. Like the refineries, for example, it's not running. So who is making profit there? Where, where is money coming from there? Zero. You just have a bunch of staff stuck in there. And you put in millions, and on top of that, they're still training, sending people on training. So I can't, I, can't, I can't figure it out. So they have to come up to the public and tell us what part of the organization that is bringing this profit. 
Yes, Mr. Nay. They have to find it properly. Indeed, the, the president, you know, didn't say anything as to how the NNPC was able to bounce back even in a pandemic year. But what NNPC's um, GMD has said, uh, Mili Kiari, he attributed the profit to lower borrowing rates. He said they were also able to cut costs and improve efficiency. So if he mentioned these three things as what they did to make them generate, you know, such amount of profit after 44 years, do you think the NNPC should be investigated for the past 44 years as to why it didn't do these things, you know, to generate profit? Well, investigating NNPC, that has been in the works for years. I, I was the African Regional Director of Society of Petroleum Engineers, also the, the, the uh, uh, chairman of SP in Nigeria for several years. All these things have been in the works. There is no organization that runs like that. So for 44 years, first time we are declaring profit. So what happened? They have responsibility to explain to Nigerians what has happened over the years. Now you say after 44 years you have profit. Where is the profit coming from? Those of us in the industry still know that that is an organization that is moribund. It's an organization that is set up to produce profit. When you have people like Arata Adams and a lot of them there, they were gearing towards that type of Petrobras, Petronas type of particular ways like Chevron or Share or a multinational whereby you give account to the public. So for 44 years, they've not done that. If they are doing that now, it's good, but they need to really sit down and fine tune what that organization should be. It's supposed to be an organization like any other organization, regulated by DPR, like any other oil company. Then they give their books and people will see what they have in their books. But so far, this is a good start. But I still have my doubts how this come about because there are still several areas within the organization that cannot yield a dime and it just stack up human beings. Oh, wow. There's no organization that works like that. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Nay, uh, now let's also look at, um, you know, the possibilities of, uh, you know, this continuing and even getting better. Uh, there is, you know, more crude oil derivatives that Nigeria doesn't seem to be, you know, tapping into or making, you know, a headway with. Um, if the NNPC was properly run, if every single derivative of crude oil was, um, you know, um, milked, if I can use that term, um, where do you think the finances of the NNPC should be from your analysis? First, it is an organization. They have leases. They should have the competent hands to run those leases like any other oil company. If they do that, we will be in good shape. All the production, all the production and everything you see all over the place, they should be in a position like nearby me here. They have a field which they took from Shell. Somebody else is running it. So what I'm saying is let them set it up like a proper company. We will produce the oil because there's still time. Although they say oil would be of no use, blah, blah, blah. That is still some distance away from us and from the rest of the world too. So we still have some opportunity to set up the organization properly and maximize what Ever profit we have and diversify it to developing the country within the next 20, 30 years, we're still going to be able to do it. Yeah. So if they start on the right path now and set it up properly and start producing oil like any other oil company with profit orientation, then we'll be in shape. It's you know, never too what, late. I'm, what I'm asking, or what I'm trying to get is, you know, what other crude oil derivatives do you think that we should be able to make profit off? Uh, we've spoken about gas flaring for a long time. You know, lately they've been, there's been more talks about, uh, you know, how we can also develop, the, you know, the gas sector uh, to make more money. So uh, you know, are there other crude oil derivatives that you know that Nigeria doesn't seem to be tapping into uh, to make even more money? Well, when you talk about other crude oil derivatives, crude oil is crude oil. You have gas, you have crude oil. So... The components that come out of these products, they are the thing that can really generate revenue. Like you get the crude, you refine it, the byproducts, we do a lot of things. We create a lot of jobs and all that. 
But what I'm saying now is let us set it up properly. We have refinery. The refinery goes to buy the crude, like any other refinery in the world. They refine, they sell, they declare their profit. Right. The real business, if they do it like that, who will have surplus money? And under that condition, all these employment, you know, this quarter system and all those things with that because you want somebody on seat who can deliver because you are gunning for profit and you want to maximize your profit. So you're going to set up the company and make sure people work properly. So I think that's where we need to go. You only have gas and you have oil. In 1979, when I came out, came back from the I've worked in Gulf before out there. I found a flying from Lagos coming to worry to go and spend a week before I go back to work. Gas was everywhere, and I took it as a challenge. So the first gas realization in 1980, I spent the whole of 1980 with one other expatriate, uh, Giba Grant is still alive, we're all in the team, to see what we can do with this gas to generate revenue and make life better for Nigerians. That took one year plus. At the end of the, of the, the, the job, we are great. We need LNG. We need the gas to generate electricity. There are so many components that will come out of it. And this country will move that way. This flaring of gas will go away because it's a pollutant. But it's revenue just flying away. That led to the government now imposing a fine on the oil company for every MCF of gas they produce. How much? Five cents per MCF. Small money. But at least. By 1981, when they came up with that, I expected by now we shouldn't have seen any flare anymore. Yeah. So, but it's never too late. Mm -hmm. Where people say, now we are daybreak, now I'm out open. So it's never too late. We have to go back to the drawing board and do it right. We see about 20, 30 years to maximize it and use it for the development of this country properly. If that happens, all these things you're hearing about this being employed, that you're going to go down to the grassroots and pick the guys who can deliver the job, and that's it. Mm. We'll be, we'll be on, on full control. We need that as soon as possible. Interesting. Um, when we take a look at the, the books of the NNPC, between 2015 to 2018, they lost about $1 billion, you know, even in the statement released yesterday by the presidency. They detailed all the losses that the NNPC had incurred over time. And um, the former Vice President of Nigeria, Atiko Wawaka, has been suggesting ways to um, stop this, including selling off the NNPC. Do you see this as a way forward? Well, it is. To sell the NNPC, that is not the problem. The point is you created the PIB, and with the PIB, you are saying set up different outfit to run the organization. So break the NNPC into units that are profit units. The refinery, refinery. If they want to get their crude, they go like any other refinery in the world, buy their crude, refine, sell, declare profit. They have a board with competent people. The EMP, which is the present uh, 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 branch in Benin, that should be an organization that acquire leases, get their engineers, geologists, and produce oil and sell. Then you have other branches. The, the LNG, which is the gas people, those ones there. You can see the LNG in uh, in uh, in uh, 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 Boni. They are doing well because it's set up like a profit-oriented organization. But look at other branches of NNPC. It's like a YouTube, just load people in there, pay money, and it's just like uh, whatever. And the DPR should be an organization to supervise. And whether you are an NPC or not, the way they supervise Chevron, Shell, and other people, that's the way they supervise any government organization that is out to produce oil. All right. In this situation, it is not done. So these are some of the things we need to, we need to face. Okay, hopefully, you know, in uh, selling an NPC is not a solution. Reorganizing to form separate organizations, profit units, and make them efficient, then give the people who are running them the authority to run and produce profit. We, they will turn the place lean and make sure.
they make money. If you can't do that, you get fired. Very okay. simple. Uh, Mr. Alex uh, Nain, thank you so much. Hopefully in the next couple of days we'll be able to get some clarity from the Nigerian government on how this profit was uh, made. But thanks for your time and for sharing your thoughts with us this morning on this topic. Wish you a great day ahead. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Any day. Thanks. All right. Stay with us. Still is a Friday morning edition of The Breakfast here on Plus TV Africa. Short break. When we come back, we're talking sports next and uh, some celebration for the Nigerian Paralympic team. We'll be back.